And welcome back, everyone, to Box Office Report today on the actual first of the uh, first official box office of the new year. Uh, and I didn't get the box office right. Uh, I'm actually both surprised, pleasantly surprised, I didn't get the box office right. Coming in number one again for the second week in a row is Wonka with another 14.4 million, dropping only 38.8%, 35.8%. Night Swim debuts at 12 million. Aquaman Lost Kingdoms, surprisingly not doing badly in terms of its drop-off, with another 10.6 million dropping 41.9%. Migration, which I finally saw, my review for that is up, 10.2 million for a 39.7% drop. And Anyone But You, the new rom romantic comedy, actually going up by 8.5% uh, at $9.5 million. Wonka, though, right now, I think is the big story to talk about, at least for at the moment. Because this is a little film that came, had a okay opening weekend. I think it was, a, I believe, the opening weekend. Yeah, 39 million, not even 40 million. But word of mouth kicked in. And people kept going back. And you had the holiday weekend. And people were like, this is a perfect little family film. And it is such, I'm just, I'm so happy this film is doing well. Because it really is just a wonderful, make your heart smile movie. And I actually can't wait to show my girlfriend it. Uh, we're not doing a thing where we're kind of playing a catch-up on certain movies. We're going to rotate off. She gets to choose the next one this time. Uh, then when Wonka is on streaming, I definitely want her to watch Wonka. Because she didn't really have much interest in it. But she didn't have much interest in Barbie. And she actually really liked Barbie. So I think she's really going to have a good time with this. Uh, but look, $465.8 Might as well run it up to 66 It's the 11th highest grossing film of last year. And it's still going. This film's actually going to crack the top 10 of last year. <laughs> this film actually will very likely cross $500 million. I don't see it crossing $600. It is starting to wane uh, a bit because it was like at $380 before the uh, the weekend kicked in. It made $14 here. Subtract that. That means $15. That means it made an extra like $60 some odd in the international market, which means it still has a little bit more to go overseas. Uh, but it's starting to, it's starting to run its course quite a bit, but it's still making money, man. It's still making money. So again, what was the, what's the factor of this? Easy. Not a lot out right now, especially new releases. Although this January, I'll admit, is a lot more packed than most other Januaries. We'll get, we'll talk about that for like next week's box office and a couple of other ones. But there's not much else out right now. It doesn't really have a contender for its demographic. Family film. Specifically family film. Not even animated, because migration's out. I'm talking about family-focused film. Uh, not family animated. Doesn't have a con contender for that right now. So it's got the free reign to keep going back. It's a good movie, which it always helps because it, people want to go back and see it again. Kids, are, I think, are either coming back to school or just barely still out of school. So that's been helping it. Uh, so you have to factor all this in. You get a film that's it's the little film that keeps on trucking. I mean... Based on the math here, this is probably made now about a hundred million dollars profit, which mwah, good for it. I'm not saying I want a sequel per se. I mean, there's a lot of time in between this movie and the original Gene Wilder movie. We could theoretically see him later on in life, how he maybe grows a bit more cynical, but I don't really need to see that movie. I was perfectly comfortable with the origins of Wonka here, which is a much better origin story than what we got with the Johnny Depp one. Which I, again, don't think is a terribly bad movie. It's just not what I want out of a Willy Wonka movie. But still, not a terribly bad movie. Overall, though, yeah, I don't really need to see what goes on in between. Because uh, honestly, you that's self-explanatory. Thanks to this movie and then him just being kind of maybe isolated for a while. He just becomes, a grows a little lonely, cynical. He's seen the good in people, but also the bad in people. So he's a little judgmental on that at that point. I don't think we really need any more explanation beyond that. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. So, yeah, the Wonka, great for Wonka. Night Swim. Now, I checked. I checked the Rotten Tomatoes before. This is the only thing I need to really check the Rotten Tomatoes on before I uh, doing this video. Would you like to take a guess where this movie stands roughly? I'll give you a few moments to think on that for a second. All right. Now, would you say below or above 50%? If you said fi uh, below 50%, you're right. Now, would you say below or above 40%? If you said above 40%, you'd be dead wrong. What about above or below 30%? Nope. 
It is at 27, if I'm right, it's here between 27 and 29% on Rotten Tomatoes by the critics, and only 44% of the audience like it. And look, I saw it, the I review for that is up and about, and it's, it was not good. In fact, this it's the best movie I've seen. Actually, that's not true. I saw Migration this year, and it's far better than this film. Uh, by a leaps and bounds, it's far better than this film. But in terms of the films that came out this year, it's the best film I've seen of the year. But it's also the worst. It's gotten probably be on my worst films. This was a bad film. This was a bad film. Luckily, Blumhouse doesn't need a lot to make it its money back. Like I said in my review, it's probably only needs maybe 50 to 60 million to break even. It's only made on 15 million, probably only had about 20 in marketing. So you're looking at a film that probably has to about 55 to break even. But given these numbers, 12 domestic, not even six international, 17 right now. This might be the first time Blumhouse, a Blumhouse actually loses money. This might legitimately be the first time it loses money. Because I can't think of any film, even the films that were bad, and there have been bad films that Blumhouse has put out, even with the bad films, they were still able to rake in, rake in the profit because they're made on such little amounts. And $15 million, by all accounts, is a very low amount. Even if It's actually more pricier by Blumhouse standards, honestly. Most Blumhouse films can be made on even less than that and still make their money back. This one, though? This one, I'm going to be honest, I don't know how well this film is going to do. It's only got 44% of the audience behind it. Now, granted, we've seen films with audience scores like that still be able to make their money back. And it's made on such a low amount that it's still very possible it can do it. I'm not going to be surprised if it does. But I'm also going to be not be surprised if it is the first loss Blumhouse actually takes. Now, granted, Blumhouse is kind of like the MCU. They have taken so many wins that they can handle a couple losses and keep going. Right now, the MCU has definitely taken some losses, but they're still going. And we got uh, we got a, hopefully a big resurgence with Deadpool 3 coming out this year. Blumhouse is the same way that, yeah, they're going to lose. They're going to ha eventually have a loss. This may very well be it. But they, they will keep going. They'll be fine for right now. Yeah, but yeah, not a good movie. Speaking of films that are better than Night Summon, definitely have better ratings. Aquaman and Lost Kingdom made another 10 some odd million this week. Honestly, look, look weekend to weekend, it actually sucks that Aquaman only opened on the 27th million it did because it actually has been taking relatively low drops. That's the part that I'm actually very amazed by. It doesn't have the best reviews by the critics. It does not have good reviews at all. It's better than Night Swim, but it's like 30 or 40 something. Um, the, the audience, I like it more. Honestly, have it, had it have opened on, say, the original Aquaman's starting like 50 or 60 million-ish, this will actually probably be a lot closer to breaking even than it is. Right as it stands right now, it's only at 334 million, which does make it the highest grossing um, DCEU film since uh, Black Adam, which was like at 390. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, or no, the original Shazam anymore, but still the highest grossing DCE film of the year so far, uh, it's still not going to make its money back, I don't think, because it has to hit like 450, 460, let's, I think it has to hit a little above 450, so 460 to break even, um, so for it to hit 460, it's still got to have another 124 million left in the tank, and it does not have that left in the tank. I mean, it was at like 160 something earlier this week uh, before we got the weekend numbers in. You had the 10 million it made this week, I believe. Yeah, 10 million this week. Minus that off of what it, uh, that. And you're looking at a film that made 60 some odd million, so you're going to be seeing a bigger drop next week. Is it possible it actually hit 400 million, though? You're 64, 66 million away from that. 65. I'll say it's not impossible it can do that. I just don't see it making its money back. And even if it does, it's going to barely do it. So, yeah, not uh, not the best of uh, not the best of star films. But you know what? I still had fun with it. It, it wasn't designed to be the end of the DCEU. So uh, people say, how does it, how does it um, close out the DCEU? It doesn't. It's not designed to do that. Uh, anyway, though, it's, we'll see how it ultimately ends up. It still has the advantage of a very small week, uh, small month. Migration. 
Uh, it's not going to have any competition until the Soul re-release, then turning red, or Luca. No, Luca, then turning red. Uh, but look, $150 million right now for Migration. It's made on $72 million. You look at maybe $38 million to round that up to about $120. And you're looking at the film that has to hit about $180 to break even. That's probably doable still right now. It's less than $30 million away. I like the film well enough. It actually wasn't a bad film at all. But we'll ultimately see how, what happens with it. Um, I don't expect much. Even if it does make its money back, it won't be by a lot. And Universal was already the winner this year, by the way, for the box office. So it's not like they're... But this just keeps adding on to it. So it's not like they were... Um, going. This was like a make or break movie for them. Anyone but you. Very impressed it actually went up. $58 million. Now, if I remember correctly, I think this film is made on about... 33 35 million dollars uh something like that it probably only had about 20 in marketing so if the film hits like 75 i'm actually willing to call that a win like if the film can actually do that that's a win for uh sony right there uh i have not seen the film it's about even on the critical uh, critic rating so i i don't really care that much about it also so um because uh, now with next this coming week there's a lot of movies coming out this coming week like three at best i'm only gonna see two so i gotta pick and choose what i'm seeing and then maybe i'll carry over one of the films from this week over to next the following week uh, but yeah, so I'm probably, Migration was the one exception, because I do have someone who wants me to, who enjoys my take on the animated films, they had a birthday coming up, so I just figured, alright, I got the time, uh, Friday, I, I went to see it. Migration was like the one carryover, and maybe, maybe, poor things, if I ever get around to seeing that. But, yeah, otherwise, uh, I don't tend to go see anyone but you, sadly. Uh, the Boys of the Boat is actually, look, on a very low budget, I'm sure it is, uh, it's still actually doing pretty well, 30, almost 34 million, uh, that's, and look, this is the benefit of the holiday weekend too, because more people go out to the we movies on the holiday weekend, like Christmas, things along those lines, than any other time of the year, which means more people go to it, more people can either like or dislike it, and if they like it, they can spread the word, which actually brings more people back to the theaters the coming weeks, because word of mouth was so big, thanks to the holiday. Uh, so that's another benefit of the holiday weekend as well. Same with, like, uh, same with, like, businesses. Like, we're seeing an influx of people coming in to my work right now, uh, probably because there's a lot of pe new people who came into our building during the holidays, and now they're coming back. Uh, so there's that. Iron Claw, 3.9 million, 24-ish million. Look, this film probably doesn't make its money back, but it's going for Oscars, and apparently I've heard nothing but good things about it. So good for that. Ferrari, I don't know how to gauge Ferrari at all. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be any Oscar buzz for it, but who knows? 23.3 uh, million. Small, it's a small, more indie-based film. Neon is one of those like smaller uh, film companies. They're probably owned by one of the bigger companies. Poor Things, uh, like I said, Poor Things is one that my girlfriend actually really wants to see. Fifteen point two million. All right, all right, all right. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, so there's that. Hunger Games, Battle of Songbirds and Snakes. I didn't actually check this one. How far are we at here? Three hundred twenty-eight million. Okay, this one is now pretty capped out. It did cross the mark for making its money back. It did make its money back and made some money. But it's now pretty capped out. Uh, there's not much else that's going to be making this year. Uh, then you got Godzilla Minus One, 1. 1.7 million. It's now cr it's almost about $90 million. That, man, cat's off to it. One of my favorite movies of the year this year. The Boy and the Heron, 1.7 million. $137 million worldwide. Again, it's just now adding to just putting icing on the cake, putting gravy on those potato cakes. Trolls band together. How far have you come? How close are you? 200 million. Oh, oh. Now I didn't mention it needs to make about 210 to break even. It's about 9 million away. I still don't think it's going to do it, but man, is it, is it creeping up there? I also don't think this is going to justify the making a fourth one. <laughs> that last one was not the best movie in the world. Uh, migration was definitely better than Trolls 3. That's for certain. And then you got Wish, which is no longer making a million a week. 181, it's pretty done. It, the only thing I can say is it uh, softens the blow Disney took this year by a smidgem. And when I say smidgem, I mean smidgem. <laughs> uh, 
This year, though, Disney has got a pretty light year coming up, So, but with some big hitters. So hopefully that's going to really kind of set them back up for greatness in the coming year. This is more of a recovery year than a big year for them. Uh, all beyond all the, uh, all of us strangers. I don't know what that is. Uh, screen are drawn back to his childhood home, enters into a fledgling relationship with a mysterious neighbor. And then he discovers that his parents appear to be living just as they were the day they died. 30. Oh, I heard about this film. I was hearing about it on one of my, uh, film talk shows yesterday. Uh, okay. That's, that's interesting. Uh, who's in this cast? Uh, let's see here. Andrew Hay. Oh, uh, have a Andrew Scott, Paul Mescal, John Jamie Bell. Uh, interesting. I mean, concept wise, that's interesting. Um, interesting. Uh, I don't know if I'll get out to see it, but it's an interesting concept to say the least. Oh, you know what it is? It probably got um, early release limited because they only added like 36 screens to give it the Oscar buzz. Because if it got released last year, no matter how many screens it was on, I mean, you need a minimum, but how many screens it was on, it counts. Uh, Napoleon is pretty done as well. 213 million. Hey, it crossed 200 million. Good for it. Still didn't link its money back, but it crossed the 200 million dollar mark. Everything else is pretty minor or done. Uh, hey, Oppenheimer's still around because of the, and it's going to probably get more screens because of Oscar buzz. 952 million. You, th you, want, you think when the Oscar push happens and it gets more screens again, it's going to cross a billion? 48 million's a lot. I don't think it's going to do it. But yeah, that was the box office this week. So let's look at the box office, uh, or the movies coming out this coming week. This is a big week. Like, like I said, this is most times January is a doldrum month. You get one or two minor, minor big releases, like Scream 5 or whatever. Like here, this coming week alone, we got Mean Girls. I'm not counting Soul, well, Soul re-release might do something. I'm not counting a Shia, a boy... Lights Out or Mean Girls. First of all, Lights Out is apparently a placeholder. I don't think anything's coming out, actually. But me, the Windigo is going to... Why release can mean like 72 screens or 100 screens. It's not going to be in the top five. But no, we still got The Book of Clarence, Mean Girls, The Beekeeper, a new Jason Statham film, and even Soul in re-release. This is a big week for a January. So the question is, what? I think Mean Girls will probably be the number one. I would love to say it's going to be Soul, but the problem is I don't know how many people actually know Soul is coming out. That's the big problem, first off, is that I don't know how many people even know Soul is coming to theaters. Beyond that, I don't know um, how many people are even going to go see it in the theaters because it's been on Disney Plus for years now. But who knows? Maybe people would actually want to go and experience it on the big screen. Like, I've actually never seen it. So if I could, if I maybe get the chance, like I'm going to be honest right now, the coming week after that, ISS and Founders Day, I might just skip both of those. I have no desire for a slasher film in the vein of that Thanksgiving. And I, while an interesting concept for ISS, I'm going to be honest, because of the nature of our world today, I actually don't want to see that movie. Not just because I'm like, oh, that's a little uncomfortable and a little too close to home, but because also it's like, how the hell do I comment on this without commenting on like the state of the sociopolitical state we are today? I mean, I get separating the movie from the, like the reality from the art, but I don't know. Like I, both of them, I don't, Founders Day, I don't care about at all. And ISS, I just, I don't know. Something about that just rubs me the wrong way. So honestly, what I might do is do Beekeeper and Mean Girls, because those are the ones I'm seeing that week. Guaranteed, at least the Beekeeper, probably Mean Girls as well that week, this week. But then the following, maybe I'll do Soul, and then I'll do Book of Clarence afterwards. Uh, but what will be number one? Uh, because of its uh, popularity, because it is an existing franchise, and um, we're seeing it in a different version, Mean Girls, I have a feeling, will be number one next week. Beyond that, though, now it gets tough because I'll be honest, I'm not comfortable in saying the Beekeeper will make double digits next week. I'm going to probably enjoy it. It's a Jason Statham action film with Jeremy Irons as the villain, no doubt. I'm all in on that, but I just don't know how well that's going to do. Uh, I mean, they've been showing the trailer enough that I think enough people know about it. Oh, God. Uh, let's see here. Wonka made 14.4 million drops, like only 30 some odd percent. If we assume somewhere like in the 35 to 40% drop next week as well, we're looking at a film that 
4.2. We're looking at a film that makes about 9 to 10 million next week. If I highball walk it at 10, does any other film on this uh, list make over 10? Ooh, that's a good question. I, I really don't know. I will tentatively say Beekeeper will be number two next week, but I'm very, I, I'm feeling like I might be wrong on that one. Then I'll go Wonka, The Book of Clarence, and then, oh man, this next one, oh man, hold on, let me get the drop-offs again here real quick. Holy crap. Oh man, this is a tough one. Uh, migration? I'm going to be honest, this is a real crapshoot of, I don't, besides, the only one I feel comfortable about is Mean Girl, that's the only one I feel comfortable about, everything else I think is actually really up in the air, which makes this a pretty fun weekend, actually. I guess I'll go Mean Girls, Beekeeper, Wonka, um, Book of Clarence, and I think Aquaman will outdo Night Swim. Aquaman, in its third week, lower than Night Swim, is going to do better than Night Swim in its second week, because Night Swim, I think, is going to take a pretty big drop. Uh, like, I think it's going to take at least a 50-plus drop next week, which puts it below 6 million. Whereas Aquaman, despite what you might think of the quality of the film, isn't taking big drops. It's taking less than 50. If it holds on that trajectory, you're looking at a film that only drops about to six some odd million next week, which makes it more than Night Swim in my prediction. So yeah, so once again, Mean Girls, The Beekeeper, Wonka, Book of Clarence, and Aquaman. I might be dead wrong on this, like very dead wrong on this. And that's okay, I've been dead wrong many a times, but damn, this is a weird, wild weekend, and I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, what do you got for this weekend? Why do you got it? What do you think of the weekend coming up? It's a weird, for January, this is a stacked weekend. Uh, I mean, we're not, we don't have like a true blockbuster coming out, but it's a stacked weekend, I think. Anyway, let me know what you think. Tell them, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you folks later.